Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will be reviewing a 3D scanner called The 3 by Matter and Form, a Canadian company. Unlike most handheld scanners on the market that rely on blue light for 3D scanning, this scanner uses a DLP projector to project lines and patterns onto the surface of an object. It's equipped with two 13 megapixel Sony image sensors, which not only scan the object, but also capture its colors. One of the standout features of this scanner is that there's no software to install. Everything is processed directly inside the scanner, which comes with its own quad-core CPU, GPU, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and 16 gigabytes of storage. All you need is a tablet or a low-spec computer with an updated browser to operate it. For smaller objects that fit on the turntable, the scanner automates the process by rotating the object, capturing it from multiple angles, and stitching and merging the scan seamlessly for you. In addition to small objects, the 3 is also capable of scanning larger objects, like the scooter model on their website. This scanner also supports open source projects and provides an API, making it an excellent tool for robotics, vision systems, or other scanning-related applications. I'd like to thank Matter Inform for sending me this scanner to review and for sponsoring today's video. And with that, let's get started. The scanner came with a carrying case. On top, we have the user manual and Wi-Fi antenna. Underneath, we have the scanner, turntable, tripod, power supply, and adapters for different types of outlets. Additionally, there are two calibration plates in different sizes. The scanner features two cameras on the sides and a projector in the center. At the back, there is a Wi-Fi antenna connector, a turntable connector, an ethernet port, a power supply port, and the power button. The tripod has a ball head, allowing the scanner to adjust to all angles to fit the object. Once turned on, it displays a hotspot for connecting with a phone, tablet, or computer. Since I have Ethernet, I will use an Ethernet cable to set up the Wi-Fi. Once the Ethernet cable is connected, the IP address is displayed, and I can use any browser to access it. We don't have any choice but to accept the terms and conditions, however we do have the option to skip the tutorial. After that, I'll proceed to upgrade it to the latest firmware. After the upgrade, the scanner restarts and displays a change log. Before using the scanner, I connect it to my Wi-Fi network and remove the Ethernet cable. It supports both 2.4 GHz and 5.8 GHz networks, and I let it connect. The scanner confirms that it is connected to my Wi-Fi, displaying the new IP address. Now let's start our first scan. To get familiar with the process, I'll begin with something simple. This Hello Kitty figure is ideal. I start a new project, give it a name, place the object on the turntable, and click the Add Scan button. The object needs to be positioned and visible on both cameras. For exposure, gain, and projector brightness, I adjust the settings to make the object as bright as possible without showing red shadows. For capture settings, I leave the defaults medium density and noise reduction set to 10. I set the turntable to rotate 360 degrees, making eight scans with 45 degree rotations between each scan. Next, we perform turntable calibration. This step is required before scanning a new object since the angle, distance, and focus between the turntable and the scanner may change. First, we focus on the object using both cameras. Then, we use the appropriate calibration card based on the distance. As I'm scanning a small object with the scanner close to the turntable, I use the small card. The turntable rotates and scans the card. The calibration was completed in about 30 seconds. Afterward, the object is placed back on the turntable for scanning. The eight scans take approximately 90 seconds, followed by 55 seconds to merge them into a single group. The result looks good, though the scanner's higher angle misses some details. To capture more angles, I lay the object flat and scan it again.
the process takes the same 90 seconds plus another minute for processing. With the second group of scans complete, I align it with the first group using the software. I select the first group as the base scan and the second group as the aligning scan. The alignment takes about 15 seconds. While most details are captured, some areas on the back are still missing. So I flip the object face down for another scan. The process takes another 90 seconds for scanning and about a minute for processing. After aligning the third scan to the first, the process is complete in 20 seconds. Overall, the three scans take about 10 minutes. Satisfied with the coverage, I merge the scans into one model. Merging them takes less than 10 seconds. There are small gaps, but the software will fill them when creating the mesh. I choose the default medium quality, and the mesh creation finishes in 1 minute and 38 seconds. The model consists of 1.3 million triangles and is slightly over 30 megabytes. To export it as an STL file, I reduce the triangle count by 50% to simplify the model. This step takes under 5 minutes and the surface quality remains acceptable. Exporting the STL file takes just a few seconds. The entire process, from unboxing to completing the first scan, takes about 25 minutes. I open the STL file in Prusa Slicer, where everything looks good. I print the model and compare it to the original. On the left is the 3D scanned and reprinted model. Compared to the original, the neck area is less detailed, as it contained a gap that the software filled. However, the rest of the model is quite similar to the original. Although the details are not as crisp, the result is still quite good, especially considering there was no post-processing and the software handled everything. Since the first scan was just a simple model, I'll now try scanning the Spider-Man model to see how the scanner handles intricate details. I'll follow the same process, starting with recalibrating the scanner. Then, I'll scan the model in an upright position. This time, the single upright scan performed quite well, capturing nearly the entire model except for the bottom and the sides. Next, I'll lay the model flat face up and perform another scan. After that, I'll let the software align both scans. The two scans successfully captured all angles, but I'll still perform a face down scan to ensure no details are missing. Once the third scan is complete, I'll align it with the first two scans. Finally, I will merge all the scans and let the software take care of the rest. The results look great. No missing areas are visible. I'll proceed to click the Mesh button and export the file as an STL. Following the same process as the Hello Kitty scan, I'll reprint the Spider-Man model and compare it to the original. Once again, the 3D scan model captures all the details, but the surface detail is slightly less crisp than the original. If they aren't placed side by side, the scan model still looks excellent. It feels like the original was printed with a high-resolution 14K resin printer, while the scanned version appears to have been printed with a lower resolution. Overall, everything seems to have worked out well. Since the two models I scanned were both neutral colored and matte finished, ideal for 3D scanning, I'll now try a real-life object, a 40-plus-year-old Canon camera. The camera, being entirely black, will pose a challenge for the scanner. When reducing the red shadows, I have to set the exposure and gain to minimal levels, which results in a very dark image. Conversely, increasing the exposure to adequately capture the black areas brings back the red shadows. To address this, I'll do one scan with maximum exposure and gain to capture all the dark areas, ignoring the glare, and another scan with minimal exposure to focus on the glare. After completing the first scan at maximum exposure, the results are surprisingly good. Some areas may not be captured with high exposure due to glare. I will perform a second scan with minimum exposure to capture additional details. The two scans captured different details. The low light scan captured small silver metal rings and areas missed by the maximum exposure scan. 
I'll align them together to see the results. The alignment looks promising. I'll then proceed with face up and face down scans following the same method. By the end, I'll have six scans in total. I'll group the scans into three sets and align them. Some scans captured at maximum exposure contain a bit of noise, but it can easily be removed using the selection tool. After less than a minute of noise removal, I'll merge the scans and create the mesh. Considering the difficulty of capturing all black and dark objects, the final result looks impressive on the screen. Using the standard scan and medium quality mesh, the file size remains manageable at around 30 megabytes. I also tried using a high quality mesh, which significantly increased the export time. Instead of four minutes, it took seven minutes, and the file size grew from 30 megabytes to 113 megabytes. However, the detail seems slightly better with the high quality mesh. As this scanner uses two Sony 13 megapixel image sensors, it can also capture colors. The process is exactly the same. All you need to do is enable the texture capture option. This allows the scanner to capture all the colors, 2D text and graphics on the object. If you're scanning a product to share with a customer, sending a full color 3D model is a much better option than a grayscale one. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this 3D scanner, starting with the pros. One, this scanner is incredibly easy to use. From unboxing to completing the first scan, the entire process takes just around 25 minutes. The scanner, combined with the auto turntable, handles almost everything for you. Two, it uses a DLP projector to project lines onto the object and employs two Sony 13 megapixel image sensors to perform the scan. The process is fast. It can capture colors as well as any two-dimensional text and graphics on the object. Three, the software is built in, requiring no installation or high specs computer hardware. You can do 3D scanning with a tablet or even a cheap Chromebook with an updated browser. Four, it supports Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and hotspot operation, allowing you to use it almost anywhere as long as you have access to a power outlet. Five, it includes an API, making it suitable for robotics projects or any application that requires a high accuracy 3D scanner. Additionally, example projects and documentation are available on their GitHub. Now for the cons. One, like all small handheld scanners, it may face challenges when scanning larger objects. Scanning such items requires capturing multiple smaller sections and stitching them together, which can be quite time consuming. Additionally, since it uses camera image sensors, scanning from greater distances results in decreased accuracy. Two, for outdoor use, it requires a shaded area because it relies on the projector to project lines and patterns onto the surface for scanning. If the ambient light is brighter than the projector, it will not function effectively. Three, compared to traditional budget blue light 3D scanners, this DLP projector dual camera scanner offers faster scanning and color capture. Its built-in software and auto turntable make it exceptionally easy to use. However, it is significantly more expensive. Overall, I'm really impressed with how easy the scanner is to use. The scanning speed and results are both promising. If you're in the market for your first 3D scanner, you can definitely take a look at the three from Matter and Form. I've included a link to their website in the description. Be sure to also visit my website, auroratechchannel.com, for the latest recommendations on 3D printers, CNC machines, as well as my price tracker, which scans popular brand websites and updates prices hourly to help you find great deals. That's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.